guy's down in Texas with Matt from Demolition Ranch and his shop because you just acquired an abandoned resort. I did, yeah. And on that was this beautiful 19-something or other El Camino. Thank you. She is a beaut, and most people don't see her for what I see her as, which is just, she's a, a diamond in the rough, you know? <laughs> it's got some issues. Mostly the engine is seized. It's locked up pretty tight. Yeah. So we're gonna try to address that and some other issues and try to get this thing back on the road. We don't know how long it's been sitting, quite a while to be honest, but we gotta have this thing running and driving in just a couple days and you're gonna help. I'm in, let's do it. All right, yes. <laughs> So here's the deal, fellas and fellas. For this to make more sense, I think what you ought to do is actually go over to Off the Ranch and check out Matt's stuff, because you could see this getting pulled out. It was pushing the trees, basically. Yeah, so I don't know much about this car, um, except uh, it, yeah, I just found it on, I mean, it, it was been on the resort, I don't know how long, but I bought it six months ago. It was there when I bought it, um, and I assume many years before, and I don't have any, any way to start it, because it's, just big broke, so I called <laughs> I called Derek to come help me. Now, you called it a car. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Is it a truck? Car? I don't know. It, what do you think? The I jury's call, out. I called them trucks, because that's what they usually get titled as, but. I, oh, is it really? I, I figured, I, I think it's a car. There's probably no title on this, I'm assuming. I got a title. You did? Yeah, I'm well, good. I know someone at the county and I can get titles <laughs> for things. So this thing is a titled car under my name right now. Nice. So I think what I'm gonna do is just jump in with these guys and figure out what this engine is, how it was built. We'll probably pull a valve cover, scope the cylinder, see what kind of pistons it has, or even if it has pistons, it could be one. <laughs> Maybe that's the problem. Yeah. My guess, well, it's hard to say. There's two reasons this was back in the corner, kind of hidden. It's either blown up and they just went, eh, whatever, push it off, out of the way, out, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Or they were trying to hide it because it's yeah. so goodlier. Oh, that's what it is. They didn't yeah. want anyone stealing it because it's nice. Right. You got to see under this hood. Hold on a second. Look at this beautiful small block Chevrolet. I mean, well, it's, it's kind of trailer parked, I'm going to be honest. What? That's a race motor. <laughs> Look at it. It's got two carbs for the racing. You've got um, this kind of hose stuff with this kind of hose stuff. But anyway, we've got... Uh, Dual Edelbrocks. We've got a high-rise intake, which is sweet. We've got aluminum heads on this thing. We'll figure out what those are pretty soon. We got some sort of shiny-looking music pipes on it. This one's been beat in with a hammer to fit over the A-arm. Chrome everything. Tiny little flex fan with no shroud. Definitely overheated. Not even close to the radiator. <laughs> <laughs> Matt found this thing. I don't know what temperature. I guess you get out, open the hood, check your temp, and then... It's actually pretty smart. Yeah. And then he pointed this out earlier. The front just kind of floats. And I think that was a feature in 1980. Oh, okay. Keeps it quiet on the road, maybe? Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Should we look at the rest of the car, see what we got going on? Yeah. See, I called it the car now, too. Yeah, see? All right, so first things first, a body size, a man-sized hole through the windshield. Yeah, jury's still out on whether someone, something or someone came out. Did it something go in or did someone come out? Right. Um, interior, let me come around that side. What do you know about ostrich leather? <laughs> Minimal. <laughs> well, you're about to learn a lot more. It's beautiful. Oh. Faux ostrich. Wow. Yeah, I like how they did the weather stripping. Attention to detail. <laughs> Clearly there. This is nice. Guy was short. Yeah, let's see. You're a tall feller, do you fit? I fit, I would, I would adjust it a little, but I, yeah, I mean, I fit. <laughs> well, we got uh, Fast and the Furious gauges going down here. And look at this shifter. Wow, is there a transmission in it? I haven't checked. Either have I, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a aftermarket radio here. 
Is that a, can you remove the face or pull it's it out? got to come off. I don't know. That will give us the era. Yeah. If it has the handle and the whole thing comes out. Oh, nice. <laughs> Yeah, this is like a 90s build, I'm guessing. Late 90s. Probably so. But the body on this thing is really nice, actually. There's not any rust. And double springs back here. Not all of them are attached, but they're hmm. double. This is... That's custom. What is that? They just chopped that, huh? They lifted it, chopped it, welded it, and then put the wrong... Springs in. Hey, kitty. What's this cat's name? Puppy. Puppy. No, that's Mouser. <laughs> Doors are nice. I mean, he's got a solid truck here, actually. I think we got a little bend up here. It's been jumped. Been, who knows? Oh, I just fixed it. <laughs> Good to go. There you go. I'll send the invoice in the mail. Thank you much. This side's probably. The, oh, yeah. See, I think that's from they had the front clip off setting it on the ground huh. that's what that's from from experience oh performance wow okay spray painted calipers drilled and slotted we got drums in the back still okay there's just too much to drink in i think what we got to do is just start with the engine See if that's going to rotate and turn, and if not, we'll pivot to that thing. So it's uh, it doesn't rotate. It's locked. What do you what do you give it? What are your odds on that we get it turning? I'm going to say twenty three percent. So you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the sparkulators here. So they've they've pulled these out, inspected these, put some sort of juice in the cylinders, of some kind, orange, right? Orange juice. Orange juice. And uh, this is what they're looking like. Obviously, cylinders are full of water. I was trying to determine if it had been burning water, if this is from like a bed head gasket, but we still have a nice caramel color on the, on the uh, center there, so that's not the case. This is just from being full. So we've got three cylinders full of water, or used to be. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is clean up the tag. We'll figure out what the engine is. Then I'm gonna pull this valve cover off inspect the valve train, then we'll scope the cylinders. I want to see if this is worth putting a lot of time into or just like 10 minutes and pretend we tried. Yeah. And then maybe just take the good parts and do something else with it. I'm going with girlfriend through a rock. You know, Matt wants to paint this yellow. What do you think about that? <laughs> Go right back there. That looked good. Just the wheel. <laughs> so back here, we've got a surprise. Let's try to show you guys. I don't know if you will be able to see it. There it is. 3914660. That's an early 327, which is kind of cool, actually. I was hoping for a 400. You were probably hoping for a 350 or 400, but... This could be 250 to 300 horsepower right out of the box. So that's pretty cool. And we'll take a look at the valve train. If they built this right or tried to build it right, based on everything else I'm seeing here, there should be at least roller tip rockers or something. And so 327s... Never see that again. 327s definitely need um, double carburetors, right? Yeah, this is a 1200 CFM that might not be enough actually <laughs> so we've got comp roller tip rockers these are a 1.5 ratio oh that looks pretty good does have hpc uh, guides and then i got to looking at the aluminium heads they're also hpc heads and we've got looks like arp or some sort of fancy what oh, is ARP? Right there. ARP hardware. So now I'm pretty excited actually to get the scope of one of these cylinders. And see if we can see some aftermarket pistons or something like that. I just don't want to be disappointed. <laughs> like I don't want to get excited because this, this 
Give me this point. What is this? Well, this one's missing the top of it. Do you oh, have a vice grip, vice grip? Oh, I do oh, actually. I got it. Am I? Oh. My hand is a vice grip, apparently. <laughs> the wiring on this is... Did I work on this, actually? <laughs> <laughs> it's... You even got the same filter I use. These are fairly newish. These are only six, seven years old, I think. Sweet. So it hasn't been sitting terribly long. That is a tiny filter. Stock fuel pump for 1200 CFM. All right, this is good to come off. All right, Let's get the holdy downies. Well, they're sim similar, that's good. All right. That seems normal. All right, guys, gonna put this big old breaker bar in the front here. Let's see if we can get this thing to spin. Not that I don't trust these guys, but it's been sitting with juice in it for ever. Plus, Matt's obviously 15 times stronger than me. <laughs> yep. Oh, you can't break it loose? I already no. tried that. Oh. Well, I just thought maybe if I leaned on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna have to go under. Matt's lifting the rig up so a guy can get his belly under it. I'm gonna go straight to the flywheel wrench and if I get the angleizationals right, we can even get a cheater pipe on this. So we can hook this on that flywheel and it's a big torque multiplier. Add up all the way. And if this doesn't crack it free, then we're gonna scope the cylinders, see what we got. Yeah. And then we gotta just make a decision, yank it out, keep working on it. I don't I don't really know what's happening. Bending the wrench and not rotating. Hey, kitty. So here's the deal. I can't get this thing broke free. I've had the wrench on the flex plate there. The wrench is bending. The flex plate is wavering all over the place, but it is, hasn't moved even a sixteenth of an inch. So I'm going to scope the cylinders. Maybe we've got carnage. This thing could be blowing up. So I'm gonna put it down each hole, make sure there's a piss in there, it's not sideways or upside down, or there's just a rod hanging. I didn't see any holes in the oil pan or anything like that, but this is a pretty hopped up engine to uh, just be kind of pushed back in the trees there. So it's gonna be interesting to see what we could find. So I got the camera jammed down the number two hole here, and this is gonna be hard for you guys to see, and I apologize, but I'm gonna walk you through it here. This is tilted this way, essentially, but I could see that this is an aftermarket piston, the way that it's flied. It's not like a stock GM dish piston with valve relief cuts or anything like that. That's definitely an aftermarket piston. Of course, we got heavy rust. Cylinder walls don't look that great from sitting, but now we know, probably with certainty, bottom end is built, it's got pistons, Obviously heads, it's going to have a camshaft. There's no reason for all this without that. So that's kind of cool. This might be able to be saved, obviously. We get it out, he can decide if he wants to build it or do something with it later. But I'm not sure we're going to get it unstuck today. I'm going to go ahead and check the rest of them out, see if we can see any damage. Well, more not good. Opposite of, it's other way of good news. This is one of the back cylinders. Again, it's hard for you to see, Matt. Look at this. It's like the bow of the Titanic. Oh, man. Why and, has it got uh, so many scratches and dents in there? Yeah, the other cylinder was even worse. It is bad rusted. Sweet. So even if we did get this to run, it's just going to eat the rings out of it and cause a bunch of damage. All right. Um, we could yank it, and you could probably have it, you know, line honed or bored and save it. It's got aftermarket pistons. So. This thing at one point... It's pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. It's got a little uh, performance torque converter in it. Transmission might even be built. So, mm. But I think our time, we just 
strip all this stuff off and yank it out of here. That sounds like a good plan to me. Well, time of death. I don't know what time it is. I don't wear a watch. <laughs> but that thing is gone. There's just nothing we could do. So we're just going to quick yank that thing out. I'll show you when we get this one stripped and ready to pull. We've got another spare engine here. It's a early 70s 352 bolt. It's going to work just fine. It rotates. So that's a good thing. That is a great thing. It's a very good thing. And then we'll decide how much Matt wants to take off of this engine and put it on there. Maybe we do the high rise on it still, but maybe not 1200 CFM <laughs> carburetion. That's a 22 inch wheel or something like that. <laughs> Lincoln, right. you're fired. Updates here, we got the Edelbrokens off, lightning whirler out, Matt's got this header loosened. Uh, getting close to getting the rat out, got to get the trans fittings off. Going to hit those with the finger burner, you know, <laughs> try to loosen those. Probably go ahead and take the accessorize off. And then we're going to take the intake off of this. This is going to be our donor engine that's holding up the mop. This is a... Uh, 3970010 block, two or four bolt main, 98.27% of the time, two bolt main, 350, early 70s, just basic 350. Now we were talking about jazzing this one up a little bit. And then I was thinking, you know, for ambitious, I could try to knock this one apart and maybe just try to hone it, put some bearings in it. We'll just have to see how bad this one is once we get it out and then come up with the final decision because we're, we're wavering here. And we, we ain't got the time. Get my camera back. Look how clean this engine is. It is either very well taken care of or extremely low miles. And here we can see where water entered that cylinder and this cylinder. But this almost like this was built and then left. Do you think it came in through that huge opening in the cowl right there? Yeah, I think unfortunately it came through that cowl. And there was no uh, even an air filter or anything on top of those carburetors. So yeah, straight down the carb straight down it. In fact over here we can see This carb was on the front Perfect this one was on the back. Uh oh She's locked up that's where all the moisture came in and took out this beautiful engine Matt's getting the drive shaft out We'll start working on the cross member we're going to pull the transmission with it and uh, something I was just thinking about a little bit ago is if we don't go with this engine again, we're going to have to find a different torque converter for that transmission, but we still have yet to determine what we're doing. You're working on the headers over here. I took the big job on. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I think I'm going to take the accessory pulley thing off. It just helps it clear the rad support usually when we tip these out and we got motor mount bolts fuel pump power steering lines and we're pretty close up here well we think we're ready to pull this thing out we're going to try to leave the headers in because they are rusted to the collector slash exhaust but i think we have everything disconnected we've got uh ratchet strap pull and transmission to Go forward, go backwards machine. It's dripping a little bit. Just pretend you didn't see that. We'll try to yank this thing out and set it on the floor. Do you want to guide, push, and pull, or be the jack man? I'll jack. All right. Enough. Oh, yeah. Okay. Good. Confidence. Ready to rip. I'm going to go to the other side. No, it's not working. Okay, good? Yep. Okay, a little forwardage. Okay, upage. Oh, 
Oh, there's still a spark plug in there. Yep. Okay. Oh. Oh boy, I hear a lot of a lot of pouring. Just pretend you're not hearing that. Yeah, I wish I would have just left it closed now. <laughs> well, it'd come out the tail shaft. Otherwise. Okay. One Felt second. like we caught on something. Yeah, it might be on that stud. Oh yeah, this little bracket. Yeah, we're good. Um, you want to let go of that. What are those lines coming out of the side of the transmission over there? The cooler. Do, will those go with? Yep. Okay. Do you want to pop that ratchet strap? Yep. Ugh. Where did it go? Oh no. That ratchet strap is... <laughs> Where did it go? It like sucked it up in the car. Perfect. Yeah, there's a lot of fluid under that car that wasn't there before. Yeah. What did I just do with there it is? Cleared the headers. Yeah. This is great. I think your cherry picker might be low on juice. Yeah, it's not moving very much. There's a bunch on the floor we can maybe <laughs> scoop it up. <laughs> All right, come towards you. All right. Howdy. Good to see you. How you doing? How you doing? Good. Just in time. All right. Not lift yet. I need to go higher. Higher. Oh. Yeah, higher. Is that coolant now? That's coolant. Yeah. Okay. That'll get it. Okay, we've got the 327 out on the floor, separated from the 350 transmission. Got a little 10 inch converter on here, hanging on by almost no threads. What's a dirt dauber nest? Hello? No one home. And this shift machine appears to have been rebuilt at some point. We got spray paint here and room temperature vulcanization cream everywhere. And then a bunch of writing and stuff back here. So who knows if it's gonna work or not, hard to say. Also, it's full of hydraulic oil or gear oil, which is kind of a drag racy kind of thing, instead of uh, regular shift juice. Some folks like to run that. So that's also pretty interesting. So hopefully this works. We're gonna do absolutely nothing and just pretend we think it does. And then we're just gonna address this. So I was mistaken, and I just wanted to correct myself quick. These are blueprint heads. I thought that was an H, but it's BPE, blueprint engines. And I ran this part number, and I'll be diffed if these aren't basically modernized double hump heads. They're 64cc, 195 runners, 20216 valves. Really good heads, actually, on this. So it's going to be nice to pull these off and see what's underneath, and also take a look at the crank. We're going to get it up on the engine stand and start tearing this thing down. Hey, well, hey. first look here. Yeah. That's, uh, this was definitely never going to come unseized in the vehicle. Now, I'm just going to quickly take a wire wheel and see if this block is even savable. Because I'm feeling some really bad stuff in here. And clean this up. I think this is 60 over. If a piston is oversized, it'll almost always 99.7236% of the time have a stamping in the top, you know, 10, 30, 60, whatever it is. And I thought I saw that here. I'll clean that up so we can look at that as well. And it's just a shame because this motor is so clean. I mean, it had to have been just barely ran and then got parked and boogered up, unfortunately. So let me do a little bit of cleaning. And then we'll 
probably end up with that guy, I'm thinking. So a guy was curious and pulled some lifters here, and these are aftermarket lifters in their flat tappet, hydraulic flat lifters. So absolutely a hot cam in this thing as well, which is pretty neat. So someone did just do a full build on this. So this is already 60 over. It's about as clean as I can get it. You can see the marking on there, 0.060. But this is so bad. We're not going to be able to fix this with just hones and stuff like that. And being 60 over, can't go to the shop. So the plan is we're going to take just the heads, intake, chrome accessories, stuff like that, and we'll put it on the other engine. And of course, we'll take the roller tip rockers, the hardened push rods, all of that. Now, as long as the push rods are the same length, I got to measure that up yet. We're not going to take this camshaft because this undoubtedly is higher compression than this smogger motor, so that's not going to work for us. We'll try to run the high rise still. That's not really technically correct, but we'll try to get her dialed in. Um, <clears throat> just going to have to figure out fuel for that because we're going to have to bring the CFMs way down. Got to get this on the hook, pressure wash this, get this cleaned and dried, and then we can start disassembling that. What's going on, Matt? Well, I'm just making this engine brand new again. Rebuilding it. Just rebuilding the engine, basically. I'm basically an engine rebuilder, you might say. You're going to dock these accessories off. Hit her with the, whatever, the Ryabai? Sounds like a religion or something. But anyway, that's a pressure washer, I guess. We're going to clean this thing up here and let her dry because we need this short block quickly. Oh no, another orange filter. It actually looks pretty low miles. I mean, all the paint on it and stuff. This one looks pretty clean. It'd be nice to get these heads off and see what the cylinders look like. Yeah, I hope we have better luck on these than the other one. Yes, for sure. We'll see. <laughs> All right, I took a push rod out of the other, the old engine. Is this really a rod because it's hollow, so it's more of a tube, but any hoos. And I'm comparing that to these nicer uh, hardened ones lengthwise. We have to make sure the rocker arm geometry is correct when we reuse the newer heads from the bad motor on the older, newer to us motor with this stuff, right? So. Measured them up a couple different ways, and they are the exact same length as a factory push rod, so that's good. We don't have any issues there. I am also going to make sure that there's no bends in them. Found a drill that doesn't have a bent chuck, and I just run this through the drill and make sure that there's not any excessive vibration or wallering around. And we're going to know that this is straight and true. Pour some gasoline in here, clean all this up, start cleaning this stuff up. Got the heads back in, brush these off outside. They cleaned up pretty good. Not that bad at all. And then we could start assembling, hopefully early in the morning. I don't know, we'll see. So we got to looking at this block here and freeze plugs. They're, well, slightly rotten. This one's leaking, the other one's leaking. This side, I just, Cleaned out the dirt with the cheek poker right there and it started pouring out the bottom. So now I gotta knock all the freeze plugs out of this thing and replace those. There's also one leaking back here. Once we get those knocked in, then we can once again try to paint it. Got the heads off of the newer, older donor engine we're using. Got a couple surprises here. One, it's pretty clean. We're gonna pretend we didn't see any of this stuff for now. We're just gonna clean it. We'll come back around. This one was already clean because it wasn't firing based on the sparkle lighter, so I'm not too worried about that. But look at this surprise. 
This engine is also bored. This one is 30 over, and that explains the aftermarket head gaskets I found, plus all this orange RTV over everything. It had a new fuel pump down here. So this engine's been rebuilt at some time or another. So that's kind of cool, I guess. So comforting, I should say. I'm gonna go through, pop all these up to the top in the hole, clean them up. This is one I cleaned here, for example. So start rolling around, clean this. WD-40 out the cylinders, clean those up best I can, make sure all the lifters are clean, all that, and we can start reassembly. Well, this is much better, and there's actually some crosshatch still on this. So, I'm trying to show you guys, it's kind of hard. So whenever it was built, it wasn't that many bajillion miles ago. Got the uh, face cleaned up here for the head gasket. Uh, cleaned out all the lifters. I've got some lubricant in them right now. Wait, that's on the. I gotta look at that one. Oh yeah, it's seated. So go ahead and throw the head gaskets on. Get those blueprint heads back on. Start torquing everything down. And then we got to start on valve train and proper rocket arm geometry. Oh. Setting the lifter preload. Ooh. Did you order some parts? Yes. That's a flex plate. And this is our other. What are they called? Torquey thingy? Yeah, the torque control body mechanisms. Yes. So guys, torquing these in three steps, you know, lower to higher, and pretty simple to start in the center and then just work your way around. And a circle pattern, and come all the way around, then start over and do it again, and uh, bring them up to 65, 70. Is what uh, these heads are calling for. And then this is the gasket, 501. I called tech support for a blueprint just to make sure we were running the gasket that this particular head recommended. And this is what they wanted, so got that on there. I got updates. Valve train is done. Everything checks out, thankfully. Set all these at a zero lash, then gave them three quarter turn. Reuse the poly locks. All of these look fine. Health checked everything. The trunnions and everything look great. Got uh, Wix oil filter in. Went ahead and dumped it. I like to dump it in the valley here if I can. If I'm ever building them or have the intake off. Soak the lifters down good. Get the camshaft nice and lubricated. Now I'm going to put the old intake on again. And then we're going to prime this oil system. We'll actually even hook up a gauge temporarily. See what kind of oil pressure this builds. We'll slowly roll the motor over, get oil up to the top, and make sure this thing has pressure, ready to rock right when we hit the key. And we're gonna build a tool out of this old HEI. Well, I say that, hopefully it works, by knocking this pin out. Now let's go put this in a vise and see if we can make that. So once a guy gets that roll pin snipped out of there, a guy can just snag this camshaft gear off. And now we just have the shaft that drives our oil pump. By the Hoosen way, this is how you would just change your camshaft gear if you upgraded your camshaft and your distributor gear isn't gonna match your camshaft, so you need a new gear for the camshaft. This is how you re-gear the gear for your camshaft. So now we're gonna move up top here, and we've got the mechanical advance mechanism. We've gotta just start hitting this with hammers and cut and stuff and uh, get get this off so we could just chuck it with the drill. So I got that stuff off, just pull the springs, pry, pops out. And then I just grabbed an old bolt here, booger all of that on there, you know, with the old lava staff machine. And now, when you chuck that on a drill and spin it, I'll be dipped. And then we still retain the same shaft and we're gonna have the right depth. You just literally drop it in, this will lift up. So you could just lift it, Drop it into that rod, and we can get her primed. All right, here we go. I didn't get the bolt on here very straight. That's not helping me. Oil's on its way. There you go. Oh, 
That's very slow speed. Nice. Now we'll rotate it and then keep going. Okay, the transmission that came out of the uh, El Camino over there, the, the pump and the uh, input shaft is shot. So that's not going to work. We don't have time to get to a transmission shop. This transmission is a known good transmission. This one came out of the El Cromino back there, and uh, it worked fine. It shifted fine, all that stuff. This is the torque converter out of it, and it looks like this went through a shop. Uh, January 27th, 1998. So I'm just filling it up with ATF right now. Get that tossed in. Already got the flex plate on and then I've marked it where my torque converter bolts are. So when I'm rotating this, I'm gonna bolt this in and lock it up on the cherry picker. So when we drop that in, it's just one less thing to worry about. And we're moving along, fuel pump on. Uh, water pumps in. <clears throat> I don't know if we're going to get it in tonight yet, but we're getting close. Yeah, I mean, it It kind of gets worse the more you look at it, you know. But if it works, is it a dumb idea? So I'm going to crawl under here, drop this pan, get all the old juice out, put the new filter in. Uh, new gasket, clean out the pan, put it back together. Again, just something else we don't have to do under the vehicle, and this is still full, and we don't want it dumping out the shaft when we put it in anyway, so I'm just going to knock it out quick now. Well, this transmission's on a weird diet, and it consists of a lot of cottage cheese for some reason. We're going to pretend we didn't see this. I'm going to completely rebuild the transmission, and by that I mean I'm just going to brake clean this out and then put a new filter in really fast. Okay, plan. Wow, that slid right in with ease. Uh, we're going to call it for today, though. It's We've put the work in, I'll tell you that. Tomorrow, start putting the accessorize on. We're going to get this old intake off. Put that, where is it at? Over here. Matt pressure wash that. Got some different fuel making happeners, got to drop them in. We got to start working on ignition. You know the deal. All the stuff that came off needs to go back in. And then we still haven't heard this engine run. So that'll be interesting. We've got to get this thing fired up. By the way, you've probably seen the tape and paper and all. Yes, I just threw it out there. Why don't we paint this quick? Why not? Well, he's going to help me put the intake on. We want to, I got the ridovs on the china walls. We got to be careful not to smoosh that around. So we're going to try to just plop it straight on. Okay. Good up there. Good up here. Okay. How about you? Good. Down. Lined up. Nice. Oh, there is a, quite a bit of room back there, actually, for the lightning weather. That's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Cleaned up good. Yeah. Well, that looks pretty good. Looks good with the valve covers, the Holly Vintage Series there. I did pick up some new hardware. All the other hardware was pretty, pretty rotten and corrody, and I got new hardware for the headers as well. So now we can just start blasting everything back on. I am going to, because I got this on... Well, not top dead center. It's actually 12 degrees before top dead center. I'm gonna drop in my lightning whirler. And all I gotta do is point the rotor to the cap where I want the number one to be, line them up exactly. And then I can start running the lightning hoses. And then when we go to light this off, it should be good enough timing to just bark off. And then I'll get the ear meter in here and make adjustments later. Didn't even bring a timing gun, don't need one. And then we'll finish it off with fuel. We got to run fuel lines. We got to go from here actually to this side now. So that's going to be a little bit different because we're going to be running 
these guys, Holly 450s, chokeless, mechanical secondaries. They should work pretty good. Still a little bit too much carb. It's nice to know the engine's 30 over, but I did get progressive linkage, and I'll explain all that later down the road. No, when a guy and a guy and a guy tore this stuff out, it did have an MSD looking magnetic style pickup ignition system with some sort of box. And we also found another lightning whirler behind the seat. So they're having ignition issues. I didn't want to waste a bunch of time on that. So I did order, and it just showed up this morning, a flamethrower. I've used these a couple times and had pretty good luck with them. The nice thing is they are so simple to install. This goes to an ignition coil, just a standard 12 volt coil. Your ignition wire goes to the positive side and you're done. That's it. So in this case, this used to go to that control box or a coil, or it could go to an HEI. You would just take this, put that on the coil, bada bing, bada bang, done. So again, I'm just going to drop this in, point the rotor towards the number one cylinder, and then we should have timing pretty well locked. Um, tighten this down. i got to find the piece that goes on the intake back there. And then, knowing that's in place, I can plop the carbs on get these covered up. We don't want to drop anything in this at this point. And we're making progress. Got the power steering pump on. Got those lines on. Intake's torqued down. <sighs> kind of just procrastinating on the headers, you know. We're not close. You sure you're good there, Derek? Yep. How do they made us in it? If I kill Vice Grip. <laughs> the one time you get him out here. It's worth it. Who's, yeah, who's that moving a truck? Do we have any bets on height, the trespassers? <laughs> I bet they don't go very high. It usually just like kind of rises up like six feet and goes back down. But if they pack any too hot, those rocks go flying. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. You got a mountain. Look how high that is. That orange is all the tannerite dust coming up. Wild. This came over farther than I thought it was. Up. Well, we took a little break, took a field trip out to Matt's new abandoned resort, the Desperado. And uh, yeah, we're just blowing up a hillside here. He's, look at all this, all the way down. They're putting in a road here using Tannerite and uh, might have just discovered a little cave up here. All right, time to get back to work. You can check out all this stuff here over at that channel off the ranch. They're gonna, they got a couple more explosions to do and a lot of work. Well, back at it here on the El Camino. Got the lightning hoses uh, in. I went ahead and did a cut to fit, crimp your own kit thing. It came with this, whatever this in, wind sailor, lava shooter thing kit. So use them, got the coil mounted over there loosely, it flops around, we'll ignore that. And uh, started looking at fuel, because I need to wire stuff, uh, but no one's here right now, and I don't know where the fittings and stuff are. So I kind of was going to go ahead and do the carburation stuff. Problem with the Hollies I got is, if I put these on, it's going to hit the lightning whirler. Even if I try to go sideways, because you can do side mount or inline on these, it's gonna hit. And I just didn't pay enough attention that this Y-end tunnel ram is specific to Edelbrock, apparently. And that's how this cut right here for the lightning whirler. The Edelbrock has that same exact provision. So these will slide right on. So we're gonna have to switch over to Edelbrokens, unfortunately. I'll just send these back and see if Matt wants to pick up new 
two new of these puppies and uh, we'll get them on, bolted down, at least get these big holes taken care of and then I'll figure out some sort of progressive linkage or something later and how we're going to operate them. And then once they're on, I could start working on the fuel distribution and get that done as well. Now, you can see here, I do have a fuel pump plugged right into the tank. I have no idea what's in this fuel tank, but you know, you hear me say it a lot, we need to capacitize. So we're gonna try to run that, see what happens. Might just dump in five to 10 gallons of fresh fuel, see if this thing will eat off of it and flush the lizer out a little bit and then, you know, we just don't know yet. Well, we did get some new Edelbrokens here. These are 600. This is a 1406, so we've got the digital choke on them. Both of them do. Normally on a, on a dual carb setup, you'd just run one with a choke. But I'm gonna have to wire both these in or completely take apart one of these. Um, but for now, we'll just try to run both. Not going to bolt these on permanently yet. Still got to uh, get some plugs for the rear here. Um, well, actually the back carb, we might run that over to the brake booster, but this one needs plugged. I got to plug off a bunch of stuff up front, but again, we can just put these on for now. That's going to be our look. Looks pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Glad we agree. Now I could figure out fuel and it has changed. Now we're back on this side. So I had some really cool fuel fittings for those Hollies. We're not going to be able to use those, unfortunately. This is a little bit different, uh, but I can make something work here probably really quick. Mikey's siphoning the old gas out. Looks like it's still that, good. It's not terrible. Give yeah. it a taste there, cat. Tell us what it smells like. It's good bonfire it's gas. Oh, we, uh, we got a new shifter in here from the El Cromino and it's doing shift things. We've got a bunch of wiring done. Linkage is in here. This is a progressive linkage, so when we run the back throttle, it's not gonna crack the front one all the way. I'll adjust on that as needed. Working on belts right now. Lightning cube is in. Uh, got all the charging where the wiring done. Digital chokes are done. Getting very close to firing this up. To attempting to fire it up. Right. That's better. Disclaimer. Uh, we're in park. Here's the matter. Never mind. Ready? A sparkle tester. Yeah, it's not galloping. So this light will blink if we have spark. Yep. Can't believe it would need that much fuel. Fire. Fuel timing. That's what we need. Well, for. Oh, we didn't put we didn't put the pistons in the cylinders. Oh. Shucks. I always forget that. Okay, here we go. <laughs> we got spark, we got fuel. Do we have compression? We need compression. Timing. <laughs> All right, let me double check timing. And we'll be right back with you after this commercial. You gotta yell, bring the thunder. Okay. For me, ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Yep. Bring the thunder!
It runs. The part I like the most is the engine moving. <laughs> yeah. you, you forgot this. That is a nasty exhaust leak. It sure as hell is. Right there. Is that it? It's going to be hard to tune with it barking that loud at me. At first, I thought that was a rod knock for like one second. I was like, oh, no. Find a loose one? Yeah, but not. Found the leak. <laughs> Matt, I found the leak. You didn't put it back in there? No. <laughs> I got in a hurry. <laughs> Should we try it again? Let's try it again. Yeah. It'll probably run better. Wait till you hear it now. Oh. Oh. Now we've got rear brakes to finish up, then we're gonna fill it with ice cube juice, let this thing run, then I can actually start. I haven't tuned the carburetors or nothing yet, and uh, figure out the timing on it. And I don't, do we have time for a test drive or are we going straight to paint booth? We should back it out at least. Okay. And the we'll we'll it move it. And backwards. Yeah. And then we're still gonna to try to shoot some color on this thing tonight. Tonight's the last night I'm here, so it's gotta happen now. Boy, it sounds good. Got a little bit of a tick. I used the old stethoscope, you know, a long breaker bar. And I was hearing it right here, and then I ran the uh, temp gun across. And number five is hotter. I think the exhaust valve isn't opening as much as the others, but it could be a lazy lifter. We don't know how long this engine's been sitting. But man, look how smooth it's running. Sounds good, it's got flow masters on it. This is gonna be a really cool truck. Matt's gonna go check the radio, I think. Your front wheels got in some ATF and just <laughs> slid. Neutral is hard to get to. <laughs> yeah, we need to work on the shifter. Dad was like, turn off. I was like, oh yeah, I can just turn it off. And I was like trying to get it neutral while my foot is on the floor. Oh. And that could have gone worse, you know? <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs>
second coat of white base is down. I just uh, just missed it the front clip. This is going to be blue. And basically we're going to do the same paint job as Independence. That's the goal. Don't know if I'll have time to do it all tonight, but we'll see. So we've got two coats from here back. I may do a third. This back here is going to be bed lined. So skipping that. But it's looking pretty good. Straight old car. We got a dent there. There's one on the other side, but man, there's no rust on this thing. It's pretty pretty incredible actually. And I'm just planning out stripes in my head. How big I want those to be. It's gonna be a lot of back taping, a lot of sitting around waiting for paint to dry. And that's gonna be the biggest thing as far as me completing it all is you gotta wait for the white to dry so we can paint the red. We gotta Wait for this to dry also for the blue. I'm not sure. It's coming along though. Hey, uh, that's wet paint. Also, you got tape stuck on you. Come here. Come, come down from there. If you could, please. Anyway, laying out some stripes here. This tape ain't sticklating very good but I think I'm gonna do red on the bottom a big white panel on the center and then red kind of above the handle and get these stripes done first Come here. and then uh, we'll do the blue front clip last that's kind of what I'm thinking so I'm starting to tape this off here. What I'm thinking is red down here. Okay, white, red, white. And then probably two stripes down the roof. We'll just have to kind of center them because you gotta, you gotta think here. We don't need to be symmetrical all the way across. A guy or gal's eyeball, when you look at a rig, statistically proven, Real headlights, front fender, and you skip all the way to the quarter panel to kind of drink it in, right? So no one's really gonna compare this in one eye shot. But when you're looking straight on, you're definitely gonna be looking at the stripes. So for me, if I'm looking at this cow hood, just initial thoughts, I would expect to see a stripe kind of center of left side, center of right side, with a nice white stripe down the middle. I think that would look kind of clean, but we'll have to see how all of this lines out. Over here, you can see red on bottom, white on middle. White, red, white. So it's telling us red should be here, but that's not necessarily true. We can widen that up a little bit because see from the side shot, you're not gonna be able to see the depth of that white. It's more important, in my opinion, to have that red look from the front or the rear. And the other debate I've been having in my head is with this gate closed, I got kitty paw marks all over this. Do we bring the stripe all the way around this way or do we do the classic straight up and down? I don't know. We'll have to see what the doctor thinks. I haven't asked him yet. And uh, once we get this taped off, we'll shoot the red quick. Let that settle down. And then we're going to back tape the, the front. What do you call the front? Cone? Nose? Section? Front clip. Front clip. So we'll just have a tape line here, plastic. And we can do blue and call it good enough. Well, Dr. Lee from, is out on the ranch, right, is your channel? Yes. Yeah. He's helping me tape this thing up. It has been a project. Mass and measuring and mass and mistakes. I think I got her pretty close. Mouser has left us quite a few souvenirs. Goes with the truck for free. Got a couple flies in it. We're happy, though. Uh, this tape is not sticking worth a hoot. So, anyway, it's what we got. It's good enough for the girls we date. I think it's going to look sharp. Red, red, 
and then this is what I was talking about earlier. See how these are narrow, but it just looks right to me from up here. So I'm gonna mix up some paint. Doctor's almost finished taping back there. We can get that red on. It'll be about 30, 40 minutes. Let that flash dry. And then we've gotta do a tape back on the front clip. Still put blue down. And if we got it in us tonight, or I guess early tomorrow, clear coat. And this thing's gonna look really good. Honestly, a really sharp truck. There's a dent right there and a dent in the captain's side door. It would have been no trouble to take this truck all the way to a really nice paint job, but we just ain't got the time. So this is torch red. And it is red. Of course, the, this green tape, I don't know what brand it is, it struck us over here on the roof. It blew up. There's going to be a bunch of overspray under that, but the rest of it is looking pretty good. We're not going for a SEMA paint job here, but it's uh, always a bummer when you put this much time into something and something little like that gets you. But we'll make the best of it. We'll see if we got some spray cans around here or something. Maybe we can just mist a little white under that stripe, clean it up before we hit it with clear. This went on really good in a medium heavy coat. So I'm thinking I'm going to let this flash for about 15 and probably just one more coat. And that's an advantage of doing this whole truck white is this color is going to go on really well and it's really gonna pop. So I think one more good medium coat. Let it sit for about 20 minutes. We can pull the tape, probably another 20 minutes and then we can back tape it and mix up our blue. Coming around. Give you the full, full look here. Well, a guy just finished up the blue. That's uh, two coats. I'm gonna cut it off there. If we're gonna get enough dry time to put clear on it still. It's about 11.30 at night. I'm gonna let this sit. I don't know, right? We come over here. When we don't leave a fingerprint, we're getting pretty close. I'll start pulling tape. Here's a sneak peek of the lines. They ain't bad, except for that one place. It just really bums me out. That's all right. This is just a quick, cheap job. Still gonna look really good. Oh, let me show you the stars. I won't be around for this, but they got all these stars cut out. So these are vinyl, and these will go over top to clear once that's dry, and that is gonna look really, really sharp. First coat of clear coat on, we're using the, this would be the Vice Grip Garage Gloss Clear Coat. And uh, level's really nice, so I put it on pretty heavy for a first coat. I'm gonna try to do this in two coats, because it's getting really late, but boy, it looks sharp, really sharp. Of course, the bugs are coming out, but it's uh, all right. So let this flash off and hit it one more time, maybe three times. I went ahead and did the inside. Had a little bit extra red, more than I had thought I did, or would have, I guess. So went ahead and did that. So I could just right align the very bottom I think that'll look pretty sharp. I think a guy's gonna have to call it quits. It is getting really late. Two coats.
<laughs> it looks really good. Nice blue. I don't know what this blue was called, but boy, it pops. Looks really nice. Of course, we got all sorts of bugs just coming to join the party. That's all right. This isn't a show car. Hope Matt likes it. Well, fellers and fellettes, it's about one in the morning and that's gonna do it for the El Camino. We got it running, we got it driving, we did a burnout, and we've got it painted. Matt's gonna have to polish her up a bit, get the stars on it, figure that out. He had just mentioned he's gonna be giving this thing away, so that's gonna be pretty cool. But another one back on the road after many years. Thank you guys for watching. Appreciate you very much, and we'll see you very, very soon.